Hey guys, welcome back to the Landiverse. I'm Landy and this is my universe. I promised you guys that I would do a review on Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. So, here it is. So, you know, whenever you have a conversation about something that you know probably is controversial, I think it's fair to get pros and cons. Now, for what it's worth, suffer no delusion, I am a fan of this game. I really like it. Problem is, it has a lot of things that equally piss me off about it. I'm just gonna keep it real. But let's start with Pro. You know, for a long time, games have been getting away from this couch co-op type of um, gaming. And everybody's been doing the whole online experience and I'm like, I'm cool with that. You know, I'm a 90s baby, so at the end of the day, we grew up with Nintendo 64, the Dreamcast, and PlayStation with the multi-tap. Like, you know, your friends will come over, you play the game. I think it's ironic that televisions have become much larger. I mean, huge. But at the same time, it only really benefits one, uh, one player games or multiplayer games that are online only. So this game did something pretty cool and it brought back local co-op, well local split screen. So it has a versus, but it also has uh, arcade which you can play with a friend. The problem is, it's not online split screen. Like I remember when Gears of War first came out, it was phenomenal because it would be split screen and you can put it on a guest and y'all can go online and you can just kick ass. You can't do that with this game. but. I'll settle for just at least, very least, having if a friend want to come over and we wanted to put it on expert mode, go through the arcade, and just beat up a bunch of bots. That's pretty cool too. Another um, great takeaway from this game is the graphics. The graphics are phenomenal. Like, um, I can really see that uh, EA put some money in it. It's really well produced. Um, however, there are glitches. There are a lot of fucking glitches in online, and it can be very irritating. Uh, case in point, like, bro, like, this happens so often, and along with the graphics, I guess this game because it was supposed to be uh, uh, made enhanced for Xbox One X, and as you can see, I have the the old jank like the first generation um, of the Xbox One. And at the end of the day, I think that maybe, but you know what, that's bullshit because I got a friend who has the Xbox One X and at the end of the day, the, the load times are still slow. These painstakingly slow load times are a buzzkill. I mean, sorry guys, I got distracted. It's snowing outside. I'm just like, should I go get something to eat now before I, be subjected to cabin fever. Sorry, got off topic. But in any event, yeah, the load times are awful and definitely one of the cons for this game. But like I said, like, even though it takes forever to load, I like the game so much, I still continue to play. It's not a deal breaker for me. So yeah, another pro is I really like uh, the daily login crate aspect of the game because at the end of the day, you still are allowed, you know, and since I always play like um, heroes and villains in particular, I, uh, I love the hero crates, so when I get the daily login crates, I'll always get like credits. Sometimes you get crystals and sometimes you get crafting parts in order to upgrade your character, so I really like that. But at the same time, it's like these co the cost of the crates, it takes so many credits and it gets annoying, but at the same time, they shut down the microtransactions where, you know, everybody was like, they wanted basically, if you had the money, if you get your parents' credit card, your kid, be like 11 and just kicking my ass just for the simple fact that you went and took the credit card and just bought a bunch of um, crystals to upgrade your characters. So that's a con, but rumor has it that the microtransactions are coming back. So I don't know if I'll still be a fan, fan of the game then, but hopefully by the time it does, all my characters will be upgraded. So I have to keep playing, right? Um, another pro is uh, I like that you can get credits via playing the game. But another take a con is that uh, a bunch of the cards are uh, for the, all the characters, except the ones you play with. So it's like I generally like my favorite characters are like Dark Maul, Dark Vader, Yoda, Luke Skywalker. But that's not the cards that I unlock. I'll get like 
Ray and Chewbacca. And I haven't even unlocked Chewbacca because uh, I don't want to play with him. But long story short, I may decide to unlock Chewbacca. Side note, just for some of the fact that that dude is OP for real. Um, so yeah, another thing. Uh, the characters. I really do like the characters, especially bringing in a movie character. You know, you got uh, Phasma, um, you have Rey, you have Luke, Yoda, you know, you have all the classics and some of the new characters as well. But a con is the simple fact that there are a gazillion other characters that should have been in this game. Rumor has it they'll have DLC and um, General Grievous is supposed to come. But like there's a million people who like they just left out. You know, you have like you have like Ventress and uh, Mace Windu and it's just like plethora of characters that they just left out. I'm just like, ah, oh, come on, give me that fan service, you know. Um, I really like um Heroes versus villains, vill heroes versus villains, because you do get to play with those particular characters. Um, mentioned before, of course, we still wish we had more of those types of characters. But you know, for what it's worth, I like playing with Kylo Ren, and you know, and I like playing with Darth Vader, so I'll give it a pass. Another problem with heroes and villains is like when you start the game, because like that's the main type of um, uh, like mission I go for. But a takeaway from it is that. Like, if you start a game, I don't know how they work work this out, but it's hard sometimes to get the character that you normally like to play with. So at the end of the day, you are forced to play with someone that either you don't like, you don't play with. Like, I don't play with anybody with guns or on either team. So I don't play with Phasma. I don't play with Han Solo. I don't play with, what's the chick? The, this chick, I forgot her name though. You know what I'm talking about? Long story short, I don't play with her neither, and you know, and I don't play with Princess Leia, hell, I haven't even unlocked her, but a lot of times those be, and I don't play with Lando neither, <laughs> you know, even though my name is Landy, but no, nah, I'm not playing with, I'm not playing with a token black guy on Star Wars, sorry, not sorry, even though, he works on my nerves, so I, I die a lot by him, so, you know what I'm saying, so yeah, to that end, it sucks because you really have to you have to upgrade everybody just in case. You have to learn to play with everybody because you never know if the person that you particularly like to play with will be taken. So to me, that sucks. Um, but now I understand why maybe you get a bunch of duplicate cards and get cards for people that you don't really play with. They do come in handy. Um, another thing I take away from the game is like, um, I really like how they differentiated all of the Jedi or Sith abilities, because in theory they all have the same powers for real. Um, you know, maybe minus Force Light that uh, Emperor Palpatine has, but you know, for the most part, all of them can do Force Push. Most of them all have a lightsaber. Like, I, you know, I get it. It's um, a reoccurring theme, but they really did a good job of differentiating their powers, yo. You know, and um, I really do like that. That is a, I think it's a head nod for me and an applause. Um, but during Heroes vs. Villains, sometimes I feel like it sucks that you can't vote on stages because for what it's worth, I, I don't like every stage, you know, and in Heroes vs. Villains, there aren't that many stages to, that you go to. And I also think it sucks that during arcade mode, the stages that are available in Heroes vs. Villain Online aren't available in local co-op. I know I needed a drink for that one. Yeah, so another thing. Um, you have to invite people. Um, like for Heroes vs. Villains, because you can't, like, you know, like on Call of Duty, if you're all on a team, or like in Gears of War, you're all on a team, they all, you, you're able to talk to whoever is on your team through the headset. Not on this game, it's not automatic. You have to invite people in order to chat. And I really feel like I need to be given a crash course. They need to hear my voice because a lot of times people get on Heroes and Villains and I don't think they understand the concept of Heroes and Villains. Like they're under the impression that you just kill as many people as possible. That's not what it is. You either have to defend the person that is on your team who's the target for the other team or you and your team go after the target on the opponent's team. 
and people don't get that. I mean, people do not work together a lot of times. Like, sometimes I am blessed and I get like a really good team, and then sometimes you get people who just like, I'm just gonna kill whoever I see, and they don't realize that it doesn't work that way. Some people are powered up and they're overpowered, but generally if they're overpowered, it kind of works out because they still can kill everybody else. Um, you know, their their character is fully upgraded, but nine times out of 10, they'll go after people who the other team realizes what the mission is, and they stick together. They, they like, clanning is an essential part of this game, unless your character is just overpowered and you're just that damn good at the game. Some people I just give props to, because like, they know they don't have to be with us because they can just kill the and they can take out the whole squad by themselves. So I get that. But ordinarily in this stage um, of the game, you really have to stay together. You really have to squad up and clan. Um, and people just don't get that. So if you are one of them motherfuckers who just run off into the sunset and don't stick with the team, let me know. But leave, leave. Your, leave your game a tag because I'm quitting immediately. I am not playing with you. Like that's one thing about this game I hate. I also um, I think it sucks that you can't have private matches for heroes versus villains. If y'all know a way, let me know. If you know that there's a a feature that is on you know coming, let me know. But at the end of the day, nah, it sucks, man. Okay, so yeah. That is just some of the takeaways I have with this game. I guess it's time for progresses as I continue further playing the game. I'll discover maybe more pros and more cons. I mean, there are a lot of good things about this game. You know, I wouldn't even do a review if I just hated the game. You know, I would have traded in the GameStop somewhere because I don't believe in keeping games that I don't like. And um, I still promise you guys a game haul, some of the games that I've still been playing, so I'm going to do that. Um, if you can think of anything else too, like pros, cons to this game, leave them in the um, comment section below, you know. And, um, and if you want to continue following me um, on my Battlefront 2 journey, I will um, advise you to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get the notifications on every time I post a video. And... Um, yeah, I'll put some Battlefront 2 footage up and um, I recorded some on my game DVR and um, yeah, I can't wait to share that with you guys too because sometimes I have some really good, um, some really good games, some really good game sessions. I have some bad ones too and I haven't decided up one month if I'm going to put any of the bad up there. We'll see. Well anyway guys, thanks for visiting Lanny first and um, don't forget to subscribe, comment and like. Take it easy.